Hey everyone, how's it going? This is John from Montredao. Uh, today I am representing the latest Montredao project, uh, which is called Soma Finance. Um, you can see here, Soma is the first compliant multi-asset DEX and issuance platform for both tokenized equities, crypto assets, STOs, NFTs, you name it, we're going to be doing it. Um, so Soma is actually a, a partnership between Montredao and a US regulated broker dealer called Tritorian Capital. So one of the other co-founders of Montredao, Will Corkin, who's off screen over here, who presented also the other day at the DeFi Summit, um, has been working together with me and the Tritorian team for some time, uh, getting some very special licenses from FINRA and the SEC to be able to manage the compliant fundraising and distribution of all these various assets that I mentioned. This is not only a US centric thing, uh, Tritorian is a US broker dealer, but a globally compliant ecosystem that we're building here. Um, and I'm excited to share a little bit more about uh, what we're up to. Um, so when we were looking at the DeFi landscape, the STO landscape, the, you know, the traditional finance landscape, we saw a lot of different issues. Um, you know, there's liquidity issues, fragmented uh, market access across different asset classes. Uh, there's all different types of DEXs and SEXs popping up. There's been multiple Uniswap clones. Um, there's been tons of hacks and exploits. I mean, you see them literally every other day. Um, and there's also been painful AML and KYC processes whenever you try to do something regulated. So we've been really focusing on streamlining that within the mantra, or excuse me, within the Soma Finance um, platform and DEX. So what is our approach like? Um, essentially what we're building is a semi-permissionless decentralized exchange or DEX and issuance platform, which includes both the US and global access. Um, this compliant platform will make sure that it is built in with AML and KYC uh, that's user-friendly and functional. Uh, this is really important because when we get our users and our clients into the ecosystem, uh, they'll only have to go in once, and once they've KYC, they'll be able to access all these various asset classes depending on what they qualify for, essentially. And we'll, we'll be able to also support any different type of, of uh, different type of asset class. So we'll do tokenized equities, um, crypto tokens, uh, STOs, uh, NFTs, etc. Uh, we'll actually be starting with tokenized equities, and we think this is important because uh, to date, you know, any type of synthetic type of asset uh, that's, you know, being represented on chain is not an actual ownership of that asset. You're actually just getting the synthetic representation. In our case, because of the compliant licenses that we have, you actually own it. You can have dividend access. Uh, you have actual ownership rights. Uh, so it's a totally different ballgame. The other element is that it's actually backed one for one by that asset, which is also very different in the, in the case of uh, most synthetics. Uh, we'll be supporting multiple chains. Um, and we'll also, you know, have an AMM style, so not the typical STO exchange style where it's a centralized exchange with centralized order book. But we'll be taking the kind of the, the AMM model that Uniswap pioneered and bringing it to, uh, you know, a more traditional type of uh, asset class. You know, so as I mentioned, we're going to be starting with uh, tokenized equities. This is really important. Um, we're going to be able to just support, you know, stocks like Tesla and GameStop and you know, Facebook, Google, Tencent, whatever, you know, all the blue chip stocks will be able to support. Um, and again, like I said, uh, you will not have to necessarily over collateralize or you know, not actually own the stock. You'll be actually an owner of the stock based off of your one-to-one uh, -one ownership of that equity. The other interesting thing of what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be taking DeFi yield farming primitives to this more traditional game. So you'll be able to essentially become a liquidity provider on these AMM style pools. So let's say you're trading uh, what we're going to call like S Tesla. So Soma Tesla. So you can take your S Tesla, you can take your ETH, um, and then you can take that LP token if you're providing liquidity on our DEX, just like you're doing on Uniswap. You'll be able to take that and then you'll be able to farm Soma with it in some of our various different yield farming pools. Uh, so you're taking these kind of DeFi primitives, bringing it to that TradFi uh, and tokenized uh, equity game. So we think that's gonna be pretty much a game changer. Like I said, we'll be able to support all these different types of assets, crypto, STOs, NFTs, whatever. Um, you name it, we can do it. Um, and we're also gonna have fiat on and off ramps because of the different licenses that Tritorian uh, has um, and Soma is utilizing, uh, we're able to do the compliant fiat on and off ramp um, for uh, individuals. So imagine being able to have a fiat on ramp directly onto Uniswap. Um, or, or even Robinhood for that matter. This is essentially a, a mix of Robinhood, Uniswap, CoinList, all into one. So it's really important to talk about the compliant element here as well. Um, so through the licenses of Tritorian Capital, which is the US registered FINRA licensed broker dealer out of New York, 
Uh, they have the licenses and special licenses specifically for digital securities uh, on blockchain. That covers any different type of regulatory filing, Reg D, Reg S, Reg A+, Reg CF, um, as well as the ability uh, to support all these different uh, fiat on and off ramps. This is really important. This means that we have globally compliant coverage, essentially, through, through these different licenses. Um, so as, you know, it also brings all the, the, the general elements of a DEX. So you have transparency, you have peer-to-peer -peer trading. Um, and then, of course, we're also going to be doing this on multi-chain. So it'll be on ETH, it'll be on Polygon. Uh, you know, we're exploring Solana, Polkadot, uh, BSC, et cetera. Um, so I'll skip through this part. Um, in terms of the tokenized securities, I really do want to hype on this because it is interesting. Um, you've seen recently, uh, you know, projects such as Synthetics or Mir Protocol, which is a really cool one uh, launched by Terra uh, and on the Luna blockchain, or you've even seen traditional centralized exchanges such as FTX or Binance that offer these different asset classes. Um, what we'll be doing is, is kind of combining all these different things where, again, you're taking the idea of actually having ownership of the equity uh, or underlying asset, but putting it onto a peer-to-peer -peer trading uh, platform that's not going to be manipulated, that's not going to be, uh, you know, having uh, front running and, you know, all different types of kind of nefarious activities happening on such as a centralized exchange um, and bringing it to, you know, a DEX style environment or a DeFi style environment, um, you know, with a bunch of different uh, added benefits of 24-7 trading, peer-to-peer -peer transactions, real ownership, dividend capabilities, et cetera. Um, you know, as I mentioned, the KYC element is super, super important. KYC is a pain in the ass uh, at, when it's at its best. <laughs> so we're really trying to make it easy for everyone to once they've KYC'd, they're in for good. You know, if they want to touch a certain different asset class that they haven't uh, provided the right documentation for, maybe they have to add some more documentation, but they'll still be able to see and uh, interact with all these various different assets that they have the proper documentation and requirements for. So we've been working really hard on making this as seamless and easy process as possible, because again, once you're in, you're in, and we don't want you have to uh, you know have a have to worry or, or you know uh, be too annoyed with with the whole process. NFTs are an interesting thing as well. Um, Right now, NFTs uh, are, you know, they had a really big boom and a bit of a bust, um, but they are interesting as an asset class, not just in terms of art, but in terms of how you can take data, how you can turn NFTs into financial products, et cetera. Um, but the kicker is, uh, it's very, very likely that at least within the US, just like they always do, the SEC will deem NFTs to be securities, um, particularly as people are essentially buying them with the intention of them uh, turning a profit. So again, this will, you know, when this potentially comes down the line, we foresee it happening. Uh, there will not be the ability to just launch these things without having the proper filings for, the, for them. Um, so this will be uh, very important for us to be able to capture that market uh, pretty early on. In terms of launchpad experience, you know, we've been working uh, with the MontraDAO Zended launchpad for some time. Um, we want to make sure that there's a very clear overlap and uh, kind of utility trans transfer between both the uh, MontraDAO experience, MontraDAO Sherpa community, as well as the new Soma Finance uh, DEX and experience. Um, and part of that will be taking the Zended launchpad and turning it into a regulated launchpad. Um, so we already have a bunch of different style contracts. Uh, we have fixed swap contracts, we have vested contracts, we have linear vested contracts, um, and we can support any different number of chains, uh, Ethereum, BSC, Polygon, um, Heco, uh, soon to be Solana, and eventually Polkadot as well, or at least substrate-based chains. Um, so we'll be able to have a multi-chain launchpad that allows for the regulated issuance and fundraising for compliant tokens, uh, again, globally. This will be able to touch not only institutional investors, um, but also uh, a, not properly accredited, but uh, properly KYC'd and verified individuals, global retail. Um, you know, that's important to, to touch on because in the past experiences with a lot of these different projects um, or even security token exchanges and platforms that was only for accredited, it really shut out the kind of the crypto native retail individuals. But with the special licenses that I'll, I'll literally talk about on the next slide or right here, um, you know, we're able to encapsulate the whole world and touch every different type of uh, client. So through the regulated uh, uh, branch of SOMA, which is the Tritorian uh, broker dealer, they have the ability to do a regulated Reg CF, which is regulated crowdfund in the U.S. So U.S. retail can touch it. Reg D, which is Reg, uh, uh, which is accredited investors in the U.S. Reg S, which is essentially global. 
um, and Reg A+, which is also another US-centric license uh, offering or filing. Uh, these licenses are already held by Tritorian, um, uh, minus the CF, but actually the Tritorian's in the process of getting the CF and is currently working with a, another partner on that. Um, but again, this is important because it allows both retail and accredited to take, to take part in both the Launchpad experience as well as the DEX itself and be able to touch all different types of asset classes. So, you know, I mentioned tokenized equities and STOs and crypto, you know, and, and NFTs, but we're, you know, we're going to support uh, commodities and, you know, all different stuff down the line. Anything that you think you can trade, you can trade. Um, so, you know, we're going to be launching this SOMA token, which is the underpinning of this whole platform um, in the near future. Um, but we're going to be launching it under Reg CF, so it'll be touched by U.S. retail, Reg D for uh, institutional investors in the U.S., Reg S, uh, et cetera. Um, and it'll allow for a bunch of different things. So what is the utility of this token? Um, so it'll be treated as such a, a token where you'll be able to be entitled to actual dividend payments from the, uh, essentially the earnings of SOMA, uh, SOMA Finance. Uh, it'll be entitled to burns and buybacks. Because of the type of filings that we're doing, it allows us to do all different types of things that a utility token tends to shy away for and really kind of try to hide behind a, a facade of utility. Um, so we're actually able to do those things because of the licensing that we have, which is kind of cool. Um, yield farming opportunities, as I mentioned, so there'll be all types of staking, there'll be yield farming and liquidity provision, um, and it'll also have governance and token holder rights built into it. Uh, so I think that pretty much wraps up my time today, but we have a, a really cool team uh, based here, part of the MontraDAO team. Uh, we also have the Tritorian team based in New York mainly. Um, and, uh, you know, we're really excited to share more about this project in the coming days. This is actually the first time uh, we've ever shared any information about this project itself. So we're going to have a lot more coming out in the near, near future. Um, so make sure to continue to follow both MontraDAO and Soma Finance. Um, and we appreciate uh, the support. Hope you enjoyed the talk. And uh, thank you very much for your time.